Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to church. Hope you still practice on the washing of hands, social distancing, and the rest of them. Remember that cleanliness is the hallmark of perfect standards. As you prepare and get ready for church, don't forget to tidy up your space and keep your environment and your entire self clean. The Ezra Company cares. Continue to stay clean and healthy and always make cleanliness and healthy living a practice. Good morning and welcome to church. My name is Ben Gaoyeni and this is his treasure house. We're glad that you're able to hook up and join us this morning. We believe that God has a great word to bless you with this morning. So we're asking you, please put away every form of distraction. This is the time for you to put your phone on silent mode and gather all your family members together and let's have a great time together in God's presence. I would advise you to participate in the worship uh, sing along and just get involved in what God is doing in this time. Get a notepad or your iPad or whatever it is to jot down the words that God will be releasing in your direction this morning. Uh, immediately following this service at 9.45, we'll be having the Junior Church service streaming on all our platforms. So for those of you who have children, please don't miss that service. 9.45 for the Junior Church. And at 10.15, we'll have the third service also beaming on this same channel. Uh, our Teens Church service will hold at 11 a.m. on our platforms also. So teenagers, please don't miss out on your service at 11 a.m. AM. God bless you. I will see you right after the message. Can somebody just lift up your hands and worship? Father, we worship you, Jesus. You deserve all our praise. You've done so much for us. You've done so much for us, God. We thank you, Jesus. Yeah. You've done so much for me, I cannot tell it all. Everybody say, If I had ten thousand tongues, it still won't be enough. Yeah, yeah.
grace for another wonderful service. We ask in the name of Jesus that you will cause light to shine over us today and reveal yourself to us in ways that we, O oh Lord, will be encouraged, strive to be better people. Thank you, Supernatural Father. We give you praise forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people say resounding amen. Praise God. I want to welcome every one of you to today's service. It's a wonderful time to be in God's presence, a beautiful Sunday morning. I believe strongly in my heart that God who has brought us today will guide us through that which he has ordained for us in Jesus' name. Praise God. Today we will continue our discussion on reset, bouncing back from the setbacks of COVID-19. Reset, bouncing back from the setback of COVID-19. All right, I would like us, before I continue, that we'll go ahead and share. Let's share and invite our friends and our families, and you can also set up a watch party so that those who are within your space can enjoy God's presence and God's teaching this morning. Praise God. Fathers, please let's remember to get our communions ready so that those who are with you will be partakers of the bread. Hallelujah. All right, let's go quickly to today's message as we um, continue on the message reset. We must appreciate that in life, everyone will experience setbacks at one point in their life's journey. Everybody will experience setback at one point in their life's journey. It is said that most world multi-millionaires and billionaires eventually suffer at least two to three bankrupt um, cases before they stabilize. Yes, some of them eventually um, come back why some fade away after such experiences. But the truth about it is that not many people go down with bankruptcy. In fact, most of the rich people you know today have encountered it one way or the other. But their secret is their ability to bounce back. For example, I read about the story of Walt Disney when he started his first company um, and along the line, he, he, he went bankrupt and when he went bankrupt he could not make ends meet again and had to shut down that company for some months or for some years when, until he was able to bounce back and at that point he created another company which is the one we know today, the Walt Disney Studios that made him what he is today. In fact, in the early days of Walt Disney Studios, it also suffered a very strong setback where he almost closed down the organization again because he couldn't pay salaries, he couldn't upgrade equipment, and it was especially in the time where he was supposed to um, record that um, interesting movie called Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. That was when this trouble happened. But because of that same movie, people were able, or rather um, bankers were able to help him out of that second bankruptcy. And the truth here for me is that no matter who you envy today, whether a multi-millionaire or a millionaire, whatever you say, the truth is they all suffered um, um, a setback one time or the other. You must wake up to that responsibility to know that these things that are negative do not just happen just to you. It happens to everybody and wise people know that it's just a setback. Your, your duty as a human being is to learn the lessons and bounce back into what God has in stock for you. If you will ever bounce back, you must remember your original mandate as a human being. And I will tell you this because that's where we want to share our thoughts with you today. If you will bounce back from your setback, you must remember the mandate that was given to you at the beginning. Many of us need to understand that we are in that mode of reset. And the only way we can come back from where we are falling from is to remember where we started from. There's a wise saying that says that if you forget where you are going to, don't forget where you are coming from. In, in engineering, it is, called, um, it is called the datum point. The datum point. Um, a datum point is a reference point that 
a, a, a structural engineer or a construction engineer have as their base of measurement on the earth. Um, if you notice, sometimes when you give your buildings to quack or people who are not professional enough, you will notice sometimes when you are in some houses, when you are walking, you almost feel like falling down because your eyes um, seems to go dizzy. Why? Because the, 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 the level of the ground is not well plumbed. Now, what caused that is that at the beginning, when they were setting out the foundation, they did not take a good reference point. A good reference point is what we call the datum level. The datum level is that point where every correction in the building must take its reference from. If you don't correct the datum point, the effect will show up to the building. Even when you have put the blocks on, that's where you notice some buildings, the blocks will slant or the blocks are not straight. It is not the blocks that cause the problem. It is from the foundation where you were setting the line to make sure the place was level. If you miss it there, the only way to correct that block, some people have tried to use cement to patch it, but it's not always right. The only way to correct that thing, people tend to watch it from that scratch. The only way to correct this is to visit the foundation again, visit that datum point again, and correct it there. If you correct it there, no matter the height you want to go to, everything will go straight, everything will go normal. In our life, we need to also understand as Christians or as human beings, we need to go back to the reference instruction of God, the datum instruction of God. God has a datum instruction in Genesis chapter 1. Whenever a human being misses his cause, it is wisdom for you to go back to your creator to find out what he said about you in the foundation. So whatever you want to find out about yourself, when you go back to Genesis chapter 1, at most Genesis chapter 2, the people call those two chapters in the Bible the perfect chapters of the Bible. After Genesis chapter 2, the world became void. The, the world got its own um, uh, complications from that day. And every good thing you want to learn ends in Genesis chapter 2. So if you will take your reference point, it's good we go back to where man was first mentioned and what God said to man. Let's open our Bibles to Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 as we go on this journey today. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. The Bible says, Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the living things that move on the earth. Praise the Lord. Now, if you as a human being would want to bounce back, if you want to reset, it's wisdom for you to go back to the foundation and the instruction that God gave us when he created us. The instruction, if you can go back to that instruction, the chances are you can bounce back from this seeming setback that has happened to us during this coronavirus or COVID-19 season. You need to go back and ask God, what did you say about me? What did you say about my family? What did you say about my company? What did you say about my finances? The truth about it is that when you go back to the reference of humans in Genesis chapter 1 verse 20, we can learn a lot from there and reorganize our life for productivity and resourcefulness as we carry out this season of bouncing back from these bad times. Praise God. The truth about it is that until you understand that this mandate, and I, as I always tell people, this mandate is not a mandate that God gave to Christians. This mandate is a human mandate. It's a man's mandate. If a man would correct his course in life, if a man would go far in life, in your business, your finance, your company, then you will have to go back to Genesis chapter 1 verse 28 to find out what God said about the human being. He said he blessed them and told them, multiply, uh, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion. And that's where many of us miss it. The Christian reference point is different from the human reference point. The human reference point is found in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. The Christian reference point is found in John 3 16. Scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He said that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. So a Christian can be heaven bound. You will make heaven but you will be poor. And an unbeliever will be rich but can miss heaven. 
Why? Because whatever the mandates or the reference points are for the human race and for the Christians or for the new creation are different. The reference for the new creation is salvation by believing in the saving grace of Jesus Christ. The reference for human race is that God blessed every human being and told them to go forth and be fruitful, that they should multiply, replenish or fill the earth and subdue it, and by that they will have dominion. Praise God. I think when we understand this, because that's where sometimes the problem with the Christian walk is, many of us feel because we are born again, we should negate the principles that God gave humanity and we will still be blessed. Definitely your blessing is spiritual your blessing is salvation your blessing is making eternal life but the truth is on this earth your resourcefulness and your productivity might count for nothing because you have failed to use the principles that was given to man <laughs> i believe somebody's getting me you fail to use the principles that are given to man praise god so i believe strongly that as we go through this journey of resetting us back into what God has ordained us for, especially the area of our productivity and resourcefulness, which this entire series is about, I believe someone here will learn and will take it up from there in the name of Jesus Christ. So we need to break down that verse. Today, I want to break down that verse for us. So the four important things that God gave as an instruction to every one of us who would love to bounce back in this season. Praise God. The first instruction God gave there was, and God blessed them. And God said, what is blessed? To be blessed simply means to be empowered to prosper. To be empowered to prosper. You might not look prosperous physically. If you don't understand that you are empowered to prosper, you will never understand your capacity to do the things that God has put inside of you. And words are powerful. Words are very powerful. In Genesis chapter 27, verse 38, um, the Bible speaking of Esau there, when Esau lost his birthright to his brother um, through the blessing that the father Isaac gave to him, when Esau came back, he asked his father, Father, is there any one blessing? Why? Because they understood that blessing was tangible. Even though it was coming in a word, in a word form, it was tangible. So he said, Lord or Father, is there any one more blessing? I think many of us need to wake up to that responsibility in our life to know that when words are spoken over us, they might look invincible, but they are potent. And I tell you, that's the most difficult thing for some of us. Some of us don't appreciate the power of words because in our mind, we feel it's just mere things. It's one of the greatest battles humans will have to fight. The battle of the invincible world. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, it said, by faith, we know that the words were framed by the word of God. So that things that were made, were not made from things that were visible. Things that were made. Things that we see, they are not made from things that are visible. They are made from things that are invincible. Until you begin to value intangible things, you may not be able to bounce back from this seemingly setback that COVID-19 has brought to us. In the book of Proverbs, the Bible says, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Very popular scripture, many of us know about it. It simply means that the real you is your invincible thought. Everybody must appreciate, as you think in your heart, so is the real you. And until you begin to appreciate that you are more invincible than physical, you might never be able to draw inspiration and resources from the intangible world and place them on this tangible world. It's difficult to understand, but it's very important we put that in our hearts. Number two, be fruitful was the next thing. If you want to bounce back in this season, as I said, we go back to our reference. This is our reference. The, inst the instruction from our reference is that we are blessed. When you are blessed, the next thing is that you must be fruitful. And I told you that blessing simply means that the word seed has entered into you. And if God says now be fruitful, it means that you are seedful. Because it is going to be wickedness. It will going to be termed wickedness if God is instructs you to be fruitful when he knows he has not put anything like a seed inside of you. So many of us need to understand that the minute God blesses you, the next thing is that he commands you to be fruitful. The fruit is the first indication of the physical blessing that you receive through that word. 
So the minute you are blessed, the next thing is that you are commanded to turn your blessing, to turn your seed into a fruit. For example, if you know how to sing very well, but have not taken time to record it or present it on the altar or on the stage to people, it's still a seed. It's until you bring it out, record it into a demo album or a demo cassette or a demo DVD or whatever you use at this time. That is when it becomes a fruit because it's only when your ideas become fruits that people can benefit from it. As a seed, people don't benefit. You only know you carry something, but you don't know how people can enjoy from it because people cannot feel it. People cannot see it. That is why God says, don't leave my blessing as a seed. Because when it's a seed, the world does not benefit from it. But when it becomes a fruit, you have started expressing it in the physical. And that is what every one of us must do. If you know how to sing, then go ahead and begin to sing. If you know how to think creatively, if you know how to analyze things, if you know how to do research, then write a book. Your capacity to think is the blessing of a seed. Your capacity to research, question things is the blessing of a seed. Then now bringing out a book out of it or bringing out a document that will help somebody else is what we call fruits. Praise God. The third thing is multiply. This is when you transform your fruit into commercial value. This is when you transform your fruit into commercial value. Praise God. When you decide to publish your book, you have not only made it fruitful, you have now turned it into multiplication. When a publisher takes hold of your book and multiplies it into a thousand, two thousand, ten thousand, or puts it on uh, Amazon that people can now buy, that is when you have multiplied your seed. Many of you think that you have lost it. You have not. For most of the people that I read about that went into bankruptcy, some rich people, multimillionaires that went into bankruptcy in the United States of America, guess how many of them came back? It was through the documentation of their failures. New York Bed Times um, sellers, New York Times started taking stories like that and using it to help other people not to fall into those problems. And guess what? Through the stories of those people, some of them began to make a few money, a few millions again, and came back into what God has already ordained them for. Listen to me and listen very carefully. God did not design any of you to be a failure. Never in, in his eyes will God see people and think that these were the same people he created. Once I was young, now I am old. Scripture says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, neither have I seen his seeds beg bread. Why? Because God knows what he kept in a man. Especially you as a Christian. You now have the added advantage of the Holy Spirit inside of you. God knows. Little wonder David was asking, he said, what is man that you are so mindful of? God knows what he kept inside of man. That's why he's mindful of man. He knows. It is only man that does not know the capacity that he carries. When a musician or a music producer gets hold of your song, he multiplies it. That is why you see some of the best music producers know how to spot talents. They know how to spot good fruits. When they see a fruit, <laughs> they pick it up. Just like Don Jazzy. He was able to spot young people it was, he was the one that spotted the bunch. Banky W spotted the guy called Whiskey. Like the Canadian guy who discovered Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber was just playing with his YouTube. And when he sang, a young producer saw him and said, this guy is a genius. So multiplication is when you are discovered and people now take the advantage of your fruits. Remember that if it's still a seed, nobody appreciates it. Only you and God know that you, that you carry a seed. But when you convert it to a fruit, you give other people the opportunity to come eat from it. Praise God. Always remember, this journey starts with you recognizing that you are a good seed even when nobody believes in you. You believe you are a good seed and you do everything to convert that seed into a fruit. Then somebody spots that fruit and somebody brings it out. And before you know it, it helps you to multiply it. It helps you to multiply it. The fourth thing is 
replenish or fill the earth. Now, it's not just enough for you to multiply your seed. Another level of it is for you to help it to make it fill the earth. This is when those who have tested or tasted you first hand and are so excited they can't stop talking about you to every other person that is when you begin to fill the earth so you become not the only person that advertise yourself but everybody who have tasted of your goodness who have tasted of your fruits can go out there and begin to tell everybody that come and see that this person is a good person whichever uh, products you are you are preferring Whichever product that you're giving out, whatever you're giving out, the truth about it is that they are excited and they become your evangelists. You are not the only one preaching anymore. Somebody is talking about you. That is where you are filling the earth. That was what happened to Jesus Christ. When Jesus came to the earth, it was a seed. Later, he started preaching his word. It became a fruit. Later, he started getting disciples. That is when he became, he started multiplying himself. And before you knew it, the disciples began to talk about Jesus. By the power of the Holy Spirit. That is when the issue became filling the earth. Today, it is not Jesus that is preaching to us directly. It is the people that have tasted of Jesus that is now saying it to every other person. That is the way to grow in resourcefulness and productivity. It's in levels. For many of us, it's, we stop at the seed level. For many of us, we stop at the fruit level. For many of us, we stop at the multiplying level. For many of us, we push it a bit further and get to the point of replenishing the earth. As I said, when we talk about replenishing the earth, it is people who have encountered you firsthand, convinced, and they go out there to tell others about you. Praise God. This is when in your career, you don't apply for jobs anymore, but companies are willing to add on to you. People are referencing you. Why? Because you are so good in what you do. If you will be prosperous in this post-COVID season, then you must multiply your fruits by doing excellent job. The seed of multiplication is excellent service delivery. If you want to multiply, or rather if you want to fill the earth, you must give excellent service delivery. People must be able to look at you and say, I want to be your megaphone. I want to be your amplifier. Because you are just too good to remain normal. Listen to me. Everybody you see that is exhibiting success in every facet of life today followed this process. They never stopped at the beginning. They moved from the seed to the fruits to the multiply and they got to the replenishing the earth. In business, this is when your product and services becomes too good to be ignored in practical terms. When your goods become too good to be ignored, you must come to that point where you have so much delivered your product or your service in an excellent way that even when there is a negative propaganda against you, there are people or there are things who is able to push you forward despite that setbacks. You must learn these principles. They help you to grow stronger, help you to grow better, and help you to take uh, uh, um, cities or spaces which God has ordained for you before the world was founded. Praise God. <laughs> I remember the story of Indomie noodles. Indomie noodles is said to be the number one uh, fast moving consumer uh, goods in Africa. <laughs> in the noodles uh, category. Why? They are delivering their services at a level every other person cannot meet. In fact, one of the things you will notice when you become a good um, producer at this multiplying level or rather at this filling empty space level is that everybody calls you the name of everybody. In other words, when you want to tell people that you want noodles today, the, the first thing that comes to your mind is Indomie noodles. But many of you might not remember, many years ago if you remember, Indomie noodles faced a very terrible setback. 
when it was said, whether it was a propaganda or it, it really happened, but the truth about it is that it was noised about that people who ate Indomie noodles were dying, especially children. In fact, many of us felt that was the end of Indomie noodles. We, we forgot it. Many of us stopped eating Indomie noodles. We forgot it for, for, for whoever cares. Look, listen to me. Any setback that gets to the point of death, you kill people with your product, that product is dead already. So at that point in time, we knew that Indomie noodles had lost its place. But today, it still surprises a lot of people how Indomie came back into the marketplace. And not just coming back, but coming back with a force that it is now the number one brand in its category. <laughs> so many years ago, I read about the story of how they did this. They were too convinced of their products. They doubted that their products were the one killing people. And they went about asking themselves, who was our primary target for our goods? And they discovered it was children. It was the children that eat the, 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 the noodles. It's the children that tell parents, we want noodles, we want noodles. So guess what the, the, the team who wanted to help them recover their image did? The team went out and they organized a campaign with media houses, going around schools, especially in Lagos, going around schools during their morning assembly, cooking noodles in schools in front of the children. And the staffs who took it there, after cooking that food, they started eating the food in presence of the children. And the slogan there was that, have I died? Have I died? The truth about it is that their product was so strong, nobody could ignore it again. That was one of the strongest campaigns that they did. And before you knew it, Noodles began to get its place again. So if Noodles could survive such an horrific experience, I can bet you there is no experience you're going through that you cannot survive with the help of practical solutions to the problems of life. Praise God. Then, finally for today, subdue. Subdue. Listen to this very carefully as I begin to round up. What does it mean to subdue? To subdue means to break down to its basic elements. To subdue means to soften a thing or a material. Praise God. The reason God didn't create everything, and many of us need to note this, in the beginning was because God wanted to make us enjoy that quality of him that we carried. Scripture says, and God made man in his own image. One of the greatest qualities of God is his capacity to be creative. So the reason why God did not create everything physically in the beginning was because he wanted man to also partake in the creation of things. And that is one of the, man, the, 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 the mantles that God gave us. When you are in situations like this where things seem not to be working for you, your biggest advantage is to go back to these principles I'm sharing and begin to find out where it fits into your own climb. Now let me explain it in a better way. God truly created everything on this earth in Genesis chapter 1. Everything. I've always explained this to people, but please let's listen to this very carefully. He created four things, including man, making five. Every other thing on earth were created by these five things, physically. Now, this is the way God did it. In the beginning, God created everything in their first stages. Then their invisible stages, he hid them inside of everybody. In other words, when God wanted to create, he created the atmosphere. The atmosphere constitutes the sun, the moon, the, everything that is in the air. Then he created the soil, or what you call the earth, or the ground. Then God created the waters. Then after creating the waters, he created animals. Then he created man. Now listen to this and listen very carefully because this is where I'm tying this thing up. When God created the earth, God hid everything that you are seeing today inside the earth. 
where God created these waters, God created and put everything that you are seeing today on the earth inside the waters. When God created the atmosphere, God created everything in the atmosphere and eat it in the atmosphere. God created the animals. God created a lot of things and eat it in animals. And when God created man, God now told man, I have created these four things, but I'm going to hide their future in your mind. I'm going to add the future of, of the atmosphere in your mind. I'm going to add, add the future of the earth in your mind. I'm going to add, add the future of, of the animals in your mind. Everything that they can ever be, I have created already. You are the only one that I've created physical. Now your duty is to now bring out everything in the invisible that are hidden in these things, bring them out from the invisible and bring them to the earth. Praise God. That is why as human beings, your duty is to look around these four things and every day of your life, your main assignment is to subdue them and bring out those hidden things that God put inside of them. Praise God. For example, Clothes, the seed of clothes were on animals. Tables and chairs, their seeds were on trees, which was in the earth. Solar electrification is in the sun, which is in the atmosphere. Hydro electrification is in waters. Almost all the minerals that produces computer, their chips, mobile phones, and all those things were on the earth or in the soil. Fruit juice were meant from the, the were brought out from fruits which were from trees and trees were from the earth. Flour, which you used to make pastries, were from plants and plants were from the earth. Building came out from the earth. So the truth is, God did not create clothes physically, but he created clothes invincible in the mind of man. So as man continues to question enough, based on the challenges that he goes through physically, his duty is to call out or to remember the things that God has put inside of him. So if you want to bounce back in this season, my, my, my encouragement for you is to subdue the things around you. And how do you subdue the things around you? Three Three ways. You subdue the things around you by observing them. Praise God. You subdue the things around you by questioning them. You subdue the things around you by documenting your results from observation and questioning. Whatever you are doing in life, my brothers, whatever you are doing in life, my sisters, your duty is to question everything that seems to be existing right now and determine to bring out what is not existing from what is existing. There is nothing new under the sun. God has created everything. I'll give you an example. When man fell, Adam and Eve, for the first time, recognized their first problem was that they were naked. The Bible recorded before then what they were naked and they were not ashamed. But when they sinned and trouble started in Genesis chapter 3, the Bible said they became ashamed. That was the first problem. And because that problem came, they had to, in their mind, go and wake up the clothes that God has put in their mind. So even though the problem was supposed to make them feel sad, defeated, instead of that, they questioned their mind. Why are we ashamed? Because we are naked. For the first time, we can see our private parts. And they said, what do we do about this? So they saw trees and cut the leaves in trees and made clothes for themselves. So whenever you see a problem, a problem is beckoning for solution and creative thinking. That's the way life was created. We are not supposed to run away from problem. We are supposed to run towards problem with three questions. Question them, observe them, and document your answers. Praise God. That is why in Genesis chapter 2, if you read 7, the Bible says, And God put the man in the garden to tend it to tend it, to call out things that were not as though they were. The principle that Adam uses is the same principles we are supposed to use right now. 
That's why we have different professions and vocations. Your duty is to look at those professions, look at those vocations, and ask yourself, what can we do to make these things better? Guess what is selling these days? There's this cubicle, disinfectant cubicle that is everywhere right now. They used to bring it from China. All of a sudden, they started making the, some of them in Nigeria right now. <laughs> because a problem will always call for solution in your mind. Where were those cubicles last year? Just yesterday, I received, I, I received a text message or rather a mail from a company in China selling to me these cubicles. And I had to call them to ask them, I just checked your website and I found out that you are a tractor company. You are a vehicular company. You produce tractors. And the guy said, we just got into this because the same principle that we use in producing tractors, the same materials we use, that's what we can use for this also. I was amazed because COVID-19, though being a troubled thing, called out that thing from within them. And because it's expensive, someone in Nigeria thought about it and said, look, we can't be bringing it from uh, China or from Japan or from Germany. It is quite expensive. And a few people in Lagos woke up and began to do their own. Guess what? Lagos started last month. All of a sudden, this week or last week, I heard that a company in Abuja has also started producing it. Everything you call problem is beckoning for your thinking. It's beckoning for your thinking. And that is what I expect every one of us to do. What is the major problem that we have right now? Most of the problem we have has been caused by COVID-19. If you are smart enough, instead of crying over spilt milk, question it enough, observe it enough, document your results and produce a service or a good out of it. Somebody shout a believing hallelujah. When we say observe, what do we mean? We say think with your inner eyes. That's what we mean by observation. Muse over the problem. Engage the power of your inner imagination. How can you make this thing better? When we say questioning, we say reason things out through asking the question why. Let the word W-H-Y not cease from your communication with the earth this season. Why can't this thing be better? Why can't this thing be, be, be cheaper? Why can't this thing be faster? That should be the general question in every climb you find yourself today. If you are back to work, be that person that is always asking, why can't we do this thing better, sir? Why can't we do these things better? If you don't want to lose your job, if you want to be resourceful, if you want to be productive, be that one person that will always question things to find out why those things can't be done better. Then the final one is document them. Document them. Capture your results and discoveries so as to pass information down to the next generation so that they don't repeat your mistakes. Praise God. Pass those information so that these people don't repeat your mistakes. So as I said, if you would be a champion in this season, number one, recognize the seed that you carry. Number two, turn your seed into a fruit. Number three, multiply it by giving it, to a, giving it a commercial value. Number four, fill empty space. Let people experience the excellence in it so that they can become your evangelists. Then number five, subdue the earth by asking questions. How do you subdue the earth? You ask questions, you observe things, and you document your results so that people who are coming behind you don't make the same mistake or don't waste their time trying to start from the beginning. Praise God. <laughs> Did you notice the reason why our world is suffering, that's our own part of the world, is that we always like to start from the beginning. That is why, to a large extent, we are not far from what Garden of Eden looks like. Because we've always wanted to start from our own place. But you know what makes developed countries better? After they've questioned things, they've observed things, they document things, the next generation looks at the documentation and starts from where those people stopped. That is why they have speed in their development than us. 60 years after Nigeria got her independence, 62 years after Ghana got its independence, and many other countries in Africa, we cannot produce toothpick, we cannot produce machines. Why? Because every government that comes after another one always wants to start again because of greed and corruption. 
In developed countries, no. Wherever they stopped, somebody takes over from there and invent new things from that point. They continue to question things, then those things get better. I believe strongly that you can do that in your own little space. Try to always find out. In this service that we are offering in this organization, how can we make it better? Talk to your boss about it. Old meetings with, with, with young people in your organization. How can we serve people better? How can we make this product or, or, or this machine better? The more you ask those questions, the more you become relevant in our space today. And nobody despises a relevant person. Am I communicating today? So developed countries are countries that have followed these principles of breaking down components to their smaller stages in their mind through adding values every time. Through adding values every time. For example, let's talk about a few countries and what their values are. It's those values that helps their involvement or they are evolving in their technological space and their developmental space. For example, UK's topmost value is order. O-R-D-E-R. -E order. Everything that the United Kingdom does is, is pushed through order, through information gathering and knowledge, which helps them to build effective systems. Majority of the world go to the United Kingdom for education. Go to the United Kingdom for knowledge. Why? Because they have been able to build systems with thinking and knowledge. Today, what the United Kingdom sells to the world is order. They don't have oil. The only country apart in, in, in their system that has oil uh, is Scotland. UK, as in England themselves, what they sell to the world is their thinking capacity. Oh my God. Some years ago, I was in the UK, and that year that I went, they were celebrating 100 years of the London Underground. <laughs> 100 years. The London Underground is the complicated railway system that operates under the earth. There is another one called the surface that is not as complicated as the one under. When you even see the map, you'll be confused. But it was people who thought through those processes. 100 years ago, they had had that kind of thinking. Why can't they? Why, would that, why, why wouldn't they have built this particular country that we are all excited to go to today? Why? Because that is what they are selling. They are selling order. Order is their major value. And that value has created all the technology around them today. Countries go there to get such things. If you are in the UK, sometimes you stand at the bus stop. There is a schedule of the arrival of all their buses with their timing. When they tell you bus 712 is coming in five minutes, keep watching that five minutes. It's just a matter of time. When it's 30 seconds, you will see them come out of the bend. You will see them. I've never seen them miss it. I, some people say they miss it, but that might be once in a while. But generally speaking, it's a system that works. They've created structures, and all this is through the value called order. For the United States, it's liberty. That's their value. Liberty is their value. <laughs> that is why you understand what is happening in their country right now. It has been happening, but they are one of the only countries that deliberately fights racism. Because in the foundation of that country, they told them that if you come to this country and you are a citizen of this country, you can become anything you want to be. That is the American dream. Liberty. To be whatever you want to be. They value liberty. That is why you see what is happening today. They can stand up and they can tell you, we will not agree that racism will reign in this land. They will continue to fight that. They are one of the only countries that fight, and they are not the only country that experience racism. In China, there's racism. In Japan, there's racism. In Europe, there's racism. But America is the only country that fights it vigorously the way they are because they value liberty. And that liberty has created what they are today. A young man can wake up and say, I want to live my dream. Sometimes they leave school only to come back later, but they can question anything around the environment and create Facebook and create Microsoft. Why? Because they have the liberty. The environment has been created for them that whatever you are inside, our government will support you to live that dream. That is their value. France is equality so that no man feels inferior. Germany is hard work and integrity. 
Listen to me. Those values are what is creating their life today. So that no one can beat you. When a German tells you, I am coming to your office by 9 a.m., 8.59, they're at your door. They're at your door. An average German wants you to always hold him by his words. That is the value that was given to them when they were children. It's a foundational thing. That's why things cannot go wrong in their country and they don't find out why it went wrong. Their integrity is always at stake. Remember the story that happened about three or four years ago when the subsidiary of um, Lufthansa, that airplane that crashed somewhere in the Maldives of uh, France. 24 hours after that crash, the MD of Lufthansa came out publicly and said, this thing is human error. And people were like, why do you say it's human error? We've not even found out what happened. He said it's human error because we check all our planes. That plane was okay. He had gotten information that the plane was okay. So the next thing for him was that this thing was human error. How can a man be so confident? It's because of the values of hard work and integrity. Some days after, when they eventually found the black box, they found out that it was actually human error. The co-pilot was the one who committed suicide and killed everybody alongside. Waited for his boss to leave, to go to the toilet, and he locked the cockpit until he was able to crash that plane. How did that guy know? They value integrity and hard work. China, innovation. That's why you see they can replicate anything that you have. It's a value that they developed 70 years ago. They told themselves they wanted to beat the U.S. I stumbled on a video, you can check it out on YouTube, where the owner of Alibaba was still a young boy in his 20s, met with about seven of his key people in his sitting room in 1999. And in that video, they were telling themselves that they were going to take America on. They were going to take <laughs> the, the, the virtual space on. They had nothing then. And they kicked, they kicked off because an average Chinese understands that life can be duplicated. And that's what they have used today to take over the world. Japan is technology. They believe that they want to make life easier. That's why the majority of the cars in this world come from Japan. Machines, they make life easy through machines. The value for them is technology. Netherlands, they don't assume anything. They try finding out what makes things work. That's what Netherlands do. They don't assume things. Everything is questioned. Their fundamental principle is that no assumption. If anything happens, there is cause and effect. That's the average uh, Dutchman. That's the way they think. These this, 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 this developed countries, they are so smart. And they are not like better than us. They have just chosen to follow the principle in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Are you ready to do that yourself? They don't have two heads. They don't have green blood. Everything they have, we have. The only thing that they've had to theirs is that they've questioned things. They observe things and they document those things. Little wonder you see, the black man loves raw materials a lot. When it comes to raw materials, we do well, but we don't know how to process it to finish goods. Little wonder, even in human capacity, we love raw materials. You see how our young kids do exceedingly well, especially in sports. Let me take football, for example, the FIFA World Cup. At the under-17 level, Africa has won that cup more than every other continent. Nigeria five, Ghana two or three times, and they've played that World Cup maybe 15 times. So Africa has won it almost half the time in under-17 level. But guess what? As we grow from under-17 to under-20 and to the senior, Africans don't even get to the top four. Why? Because we are good in raw talent, but we don't know how to transform into finished products. When Messi, in 2005, became the best player in the Under-17 World Cup or Under-20 World Cup, guess who were number two and number three? They were Nigerians. Young teenagers, Taye Taiwo and Mikel Obi. But guess what? Today, Messi is light years ahead of them. Why? Because we only know how to manage raw products. We don't know how to develop finished product. And it happens in every sphere of our life. Why? Because we are greedy. We don't have values like these people.
My question to you today is that what is Nigeria's value? That might be an assignment for every one of us to go and sit down and ask ourselves, what is truly our value that we can convert into advancement and technology? Finally, Switzerland is for trustworthiness. That's why every country, the World Bank has their headquarters there. Every country has the best banks in Switzerland. Why? Because they sold trustworthiness and it helped their development. Praise God. In Africa, our major problem is that we fear to ask questions because of the foundation that we came out from. The foundation we came out from was voodoo, traditionalist. We always ascribe things that we don't understand to invisible forces. Now, it's okay, 100, 200, 300 years ago, if we continue to act that way. But in 2000, we are still acting that way. Something is wrong with us. Everything can be questioned, sir. Even in the church, we have been able to successfully navigate that culture into the church. Many of us are not bold enough to ask questions. We can't even ask our pastor's questions, talk more of God. And somebody thinks that God is afraid of your questions. God is excited that you ask questions. Was he, was he not the one that said in, in Isaiah, he said, bring your strong reasons to me. Bring your strong reasons. God cannot be afraid. In Isaiah chapter 1, he said, come, let us reason together. God is too big to be afraid of your questions. If you cannot get the answers today, you will get it tomorrow. There are a few things you didn't know yesterday, today you know them. Don't worry, you will know the ones for tomorrow. But never be afraid to ask those questions. Last two weeks, we were all celebrating Ravi Zacharias. Ravi Zacharias did what he did as a Christian apologist because he was able to question things. So when he met people who only had intellectual capacity to think and reason, he was able to negotiate scriptures with them based on their own level. But what do many of us Christians do? When people bring intellectual things to us, we shift it to mystical. And at that point, we lose them. You need to ask God, Lord, what should I say? When you pray enough, you meditate enough, God can direct you to the things that you will say. That men who do not even believe in your God will believe in the way you answer their questions and one day tell you, show me your God. Rise up on your feet and let's pray together. Go ahead and pray together. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for grace. Ask God to help you. That you have sat in this mountain for too long. You want to move forward. You have cried too long concerning this COVID-19 season. You want to go forward. I want you to pray that prayer from the depths of your heart. Lord, have mercy on me. I am ready, O oh Lord, to walk with you. I am ready, O oh Lord, to step out this season. I'm tired of being unproductive. I'm tired of being unresourceful. I want to be valuable. Because if I have values, I will be valuable. Lift up your voice to heaven and begin to thank him for another wonderful time in God's presence. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Can I give that simple opportunity to that person who is there, sitting in the congregation, and you are saying, Pastor Godwin, I appreciate everything you said. Thank you for taking me to the reference of Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. That is a reference of being a human being. But I want the reference of John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. You want to give your life to Christ because that's the foundation of eternal life. You can enjoy everything on earth, but if you do not have the salvation of Jesus in your heart when you die, which me or yourself don't know when, when we die, hell abounds for us. But today you have the opportunity to have both worlds. I am enjoying both worlds. I'm enjoying the mandate to man, Genesis chapter 1 verse 28, and I'm absolutely enjoying the mandate to Christians, John 3, 16. You want to give your life to Christ at this time? I want you to place your right hand on your heart and say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner. I ask that you forgive me of my sins. I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. I announce you as Lord. I reject every plan of the devil. Today I'm born again in Jesus' name. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your children. I thank you for the privilege you've given to them to acknowledge you today as king. Lord, I ask that you accept them and you lead them by your hand of mercy, even on this journey. Grant them the resources that they will need to be better Christians. Grant them churches like this one that they will learn the things of the spirit and grow even on earth in Jesus' name. God bless you, my brother, for taking this opportunity, this um, privilege to be a Christian. And my sister, God bless you for taking this time to be a Christian. 
I would like you to send new creation to that number that is scrolling on the, underneath that phone of yours or the screen. Our pastors will be there, glad to want to communicate with you and lead you on this new farm faith of yours in Jesus' name. Lift up your hands, everybody. Let's pray a bit more. Just begin to pray the Spirit. Ask that the hand of the Lord will rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Begin to declare that the hand of God will rest upon you. Say, Lord Jesus, I receive grace to be the best that I can ever be. Go ahead and pray that prayer. That, Lord, I receive grace to be the best that I can ever be. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Pray from the depths of your heart. That, Lord, I will not be a failure. In this land, I will not be a failure. I will not miss it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And somebody say, believe in amen. Let your amen sound like thunder. Say amen. The next one is, Lord, any plan of the devil to keep me mentally lazy, to keep me spiritually lazy, I break free from it. Open your mouth and begin to break free. Every negative plan of the devil in this world to keep me mentally lazy because I'm a black man, because I live in Africa, I break free from those olds. In the name of Jesus, every strategy that the devil has used to disempower me from the mandate that you, given, you, you, you gave to man. Lord, I break free from it. Open your mouth and make those declarations today. Your words are powerful. What is in a word is so act. Esau said, what is in a word? Because words are powerful. I don't want you to keep your mouth quiet. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37, he said, by your words you are condemned and by your words you are justified. Go ahead and decree that, Lord, nothing can keep me down. I am strong in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Lift up your voice to heaven and say, Lord, this week, bring my skills before kings. Help me to bring my skills before kings. Let kings, oh Lord, identify my skills, my talents and my wisdom. Can you begin to pray? As you step into the cities in Ikoyi, you step into the cities in Meitama, you step into the cities in Chicago, you step into the cities in Johannesburg, wherever you step into, my kings will recognize me, oh God. And they will seek my knowledge, they will seek my wisdom, they will seek my product and they will seek my services. Go ahead and pray that my kings, oh God, will recognize me. In Jesus' precious name, we pray, and God's people say, resounding amen. Let your amen come out like thunder. Amen. Hallelujah. Finally, begin to speak to the earth to release the strength to you. The Bible says, Let my people praise me. Let my people praise me. And the earth shall yield an increase. Listen to me. We can have all the strategies, but God, who is the one who formed the earth, still has the capacity to let the earth release to you. So I want you to pray. Lift up your hands to heaven and begin to pray. The earth, this week, you will release to me. All that is mine, all the treasures that is mine, you will release to me. Begin to speak that word. Begin to declare those words. In the precious name of Jesus. In the precious name of Jesus. Father Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Heavenly Father, we have come to you because we know in you we live, in you we move, in you we have our being. Today, Lord, I commit your children into your hands. As we have listened, O oh Lord, to your word today, we ask, O oh Lord, that the foundation of a bounce back, O oh Lord, is laid. We will go out from tomorrow, Monday, and begin to question things, begin to observe things, and take documentation of those things. As we go out today, we will not be afraid of the terror by day, the pestilence by night, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we will be sure, oh Lord, that you are backing, oh God. In the precious name of Jesus, I pray over you that you will grow from glory to glory, from strength to strength, in the name of Jesus, that no weapon formed or fashioned against you will prosper, and every tongue that rises against you in judgment, I condemn, in the name of Jesus. Your mind is open to creative words. In the name of Jesus Christ, from this day, enjoy supernatural help. In the precious name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And God's people say a resounding amen. Somebody shout a resounding amen. If you are glad God answered our prayers, give him a shout of praise in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, quickly, let's welcome those who are worshiping with us for the first time. If this is your first time in this treasure house, we are glad that you made it to church today. It's now a global church. So thank you for being part of us all around the world. 
um, at this time. If this is your first time, we are glad you're here. What we want you to do at this time is to send guests to that number. Our pastors are behind to help you out to understand our church and what we represent. In a few weeks, we'll be starting our academy. That's our in-house leadership training school where we teach these things in clear terms um, with every part of our leadership taking an aspect. If you want to be part of it, please call that number and tell them that you want to be part of our in-house leadership training school. Of course, we consider you a member of our church in diaspora or outside our local space. God bless you for coming. We appreciate you. HH members, let's welcome them and appreciate them. God bless you. Hallelujah. All right, at this time, I'd like us to give to God. Let's give to God. Let's give our tithes. Let's give our offering to God at this time. Let's release that which God has given to us. Let's partner with him. As I always tell you, it's such a privilege to partner with God, to carry this word out to the nations. I believe you've been blessed. I believe strongly you've been blessed because I have been blessed also with a series that we started on Wednesday. It's going to be amazing this coming Wednesday. Do not miss it. But you have to help us to propagate this word more by giving to the course and also to our welfare program and our benevolence program that we've been um, doing since the time this COVID season started. You have been a blessing and we do appreciate you. Please, if you are giving your tithes, you are giving for benevolence, you are giving for seed, rise up on your feet. I want to pray with you. Father, we thank you for your children. We thank you because this one I've chosen, oh Lord, to see that this word never dies. You said blessed are those who publish the word. So I release God's blessing over you. Because you have chosen to partner with God to push this thing out, grace will not cease from your life. Favor will be your portion. In the precious name of Jesus. This week you will enjoy supernatural help from all sides. In Jesus name. Amen. The rest of you can you bring out your offering. Give your, give your offering to God. No matter how small it is. Just make sure you are giving. Never come to God's meeting without something. Never come empty and dead. Praise God. No matter how small. As I said last week. The widow's might was appreciated. Because God counts in proportions. In percentages. God bless you. Let's pray together as we give our offering. Father, thank you for your children who are releasing their seeds to you. Lord, we pray that the blessings of this meeting today rest upon them. As they go out from tomorrow, oh God, let the earth yield increase on their behalf in the precious name of Jesus. God bless you. Thank you very much. Let's appreciate everyone. All right, quickly at this time, let's round up by partaking of the communion. Our leaders, our fathers, please let's share the communion to everybody, including our children. Quickly, let's pass it around, let's pass it around. Praise God. When you partake of the communion, you will enact the covenant. Every word that we have spoken today are covenant words. Covenant. The Bible says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. So it's God's desire that you prosper. It's a covenant word. So when you take the, co the communion, it's like reenacting it. It's not in the communion. It's in the remembrance. Praise the Lord. The communion is just a symbol of what Christ did on the cross and led us into a new season of development in the spirit and of eternal life. If you're true with it, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for your children at this time. And I ask in the name of Jesus, as we partake of this, a new us is bettered into the new season of our life. Whatever kept people down will not keep us down in the precious name of Jesus. Everyone is shouting about post-COVID, post post-COVID. Lord, I pray over our people here today that these ones will enjoy the goodness of post-COVID in the name of Jesus. That every word that they have heard today will not just be word in ignorance, but it will be active words. As you partake of this communion, grace enters into you to turn everything that you have heard into strength and accomplishment. Thank you, Supernatural Father. We bless. The wine We bless the bread. As you partake of it, receive grace to do much more in Jesus' name. And God's people say resounding amen. Thank you very much for being a part of today's service. We appreciate you. Thank you very much for joining us. As we round up, um, I'd like you to invite your friends for the second service, which will be coming up at 10.15. Let's welcome TIC as the minister to us in songs. See you on Wednesday. you God oh, oh, oh. Mm. there is only one name 
There is only one name with power to save, with power to save. There is only one day. Come on, sing it. With power to sing. Power to sing. Our God is champion. And our God is champion, he reigns forevermore, forevermore. Champion. 
turn off the whole world. He reigns. Welcome back. I guess you had a great time. That was a great word from our pastor. Remember, it is not just the hearers of the word that are blessed, but the doers of the word. So I challenge you, take that word, use it this week, and you will see results in your life in Jesus' name. Just a few announcements I want to intimate us with uh, before we shut it down this uh, morning. Uh, this evening across the city by 5.30, all friendship meetings will be holding across uh, the city. And our focus is joyful. For those of you who want to join online, there's an online friendship meeting holding on Zoom. Uh, the link is displayed on the screen right now. Please do make it a date with us at 5.30 this evening. Tomorrow morning by 7 a.m., the Rebirth Prayer with our senior pastor, pastor will be holding on Facebook on Mondays say by 7 a.m. Please make it a date. It's going to be a time of prayer, intercession, and prophetic declaration by our senior pastor. Later in the evening on Monday by 6 p.m., we'll be having the real-life issues, and we'll be dealing with data, internet, and everything you want to know around the internet and data space. 6 p.m. on our Facebook page, uh, we'll be discussing all that. And don't forget, on Wednesday, we'll be back here by 6 p.m. for our midweek communion service. It promises to be a great time in God's presence. On Saturday, the 13th and 14th Sunday of June, the women will be having their Shine Conference, and it's going to be a great time. Uh, it's going to be hosted by our Deputy Senior Pastor, Pastor Shem Ubame, and all the women, and some great anointed women will be with her. So women, please watch out for the WOG Conference holding on uh, the Women of Grace uh, platform and the church platform. So women get together. The information is on the screen right now. We believe that it's going to be a great time for our women. God bless you for staying with us this morning. In the meantime, just remember that you are his treasure. God bless you. Mm -hmm.